Okay, hello everybody. So today what I'm going to do is to show you um, how to essentially interpret uh, statistical regression analysis. You'll, you'll need to, to know something about it for uh, for the reading that you're going to do for Tuesday and um, for the Alessina and Giuliano paper uh, as well as the Whitefield and Evans paper. So they each of these each of the each of the each of the papers uses um, statistical regression analysis. So what is statistical regression analysis? Well, it's simply a way of testing the relationship and the significance of the relationship between two phenomena, between uh, what's called the independent variable and the dependent variable. So we, we actually did test uh, a relationship when we looked at the comparative method and we looked at the, the relationship between uh, rebellion and uh, factors such as land hunger, the commercialization of agriculture, etc. And because we had very few cases, we had four regions, and then remember I added two uh, later, uh, we could use something called the, um, the comparative method. So we used essentially logic. Now, in the, in the papers that we, that we show here, uh, Alessino and Giuliano and um, Whitefield and Evans use, uh, they have many uh, data points. So they have, for instance, uh, Alessina and Giuliano have 70 countries. Uh, so it would be very difficult to, to use sort of the logic of the comparative method. And so what they use instead is they try to test for the relationships that they are interested in by using statistical regression analysis. So I'll show you what they mean. So the, the paper itself, uh, it seems like a long paper because it has, uh, uh, it says 54 pages, but in fact, uh, there are only about 20 pages of text. The rest, the other sort of 20, 25 pages or so, are tables, as you can see right here, tables and charts and graphs and all sorts of things. So, um, so let's just go back to the abstract for just a second. So, this is uh, the paper is called "Power of the Family," and so what they're trying to understand is they're trying to s understand uh, the link between cultural factors, such as attitudes towards the family. Uh, and economic outcomes. So this is across 70 different countries. So they have data on individual attitudes which they then aggregate to create sort of average or mean scores for each country and use those in order to predict uh, economic outcomes. So uh, so here you can see it says so with strong actually I'll, I'll, I'll increase the, the size here. So it says, with strong family ties, home production is higher, labor force participation of women and youngsters, and geographical mobility lower. Families are larger with strong family ties, which is consistent with the idea of the family as an important economic unit. So they believe that this, this varies on the basis of culturally uh, embedded attitudes and not on the basis of rational choice. Okay, So they, these are their, their hypotheses. They test them using statistical analysis. So I'll show you, in fact, how to read these graphs. So let's look at table two, these tables. So what we have here is we have, obviously we have letters and numbers. Uh, we have words and numbers. So what we have here are three models that they test. And so they test, uh, they want to account for this the dependent variable. So in each of these models, the dependent variable is different. So in the first model, the dependent variable is women's labor force participation. That's what they want to explain. In the second model, it's youth labor force participation. And in the third model, it's almost the same, except that they exclude students. So let's look at uh, the first model. Um, model one, where they're trying to account for women's labor force participation. Now, they argue that uh, the all the factors or the independent variables here on in the uh, in the leftmost column like weak family ties, primary or secondary education, age, uh, various religions, etc., and then also right whether uh, whether the individual is married or single, uh, are are important determinants to women's labor force participation. So. How do we know then whether each of these, in fact, ha is related, is correlated strongly with women's labor force participation? Um, I'm not going to get into the sort of the mathematics of it, but uh, this is how you'll know. So you look at the numbers, right? And what's important is not necessarily the the absolute value of the number, but whether it's positive or negative. Okay, because if it's positive, it means that the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable uh, is positive. So in other words, as family ties here get weaker, uh, women's labor force participation rises. Um, so as here, for instance, as age uh, is increased, 
as people are older, the older people are essentially, the more likely that that, that women are to be in the labor force, um, which kind of makes sense. Now, uh, so that's what the signs mean. So, so here, let's find a negative. So. Uh, here's a negative relationship, uh, uh, Catholic. So, uh, if uh, if uh, uh, the individual is Catholic, all th other things being equal, she is more likely to be in the labor. She is less likely, rather, to be in the labor force because it's negative. And and so, how do we know then whether the relationship is is a strong relationship? Well, it's the stars here. Three stars means essentially. Uh, a p-value of 0 0.00 less than 0 0.001. You don't really have to know that, but all you have to know is that it's it's it means it's a very strong relationship. Uh, two stars is still fairly strong, but not as strong. And uh, if if there are no stars, right, besides uh, beside these, then uh, beside the the the, bra the the number in brackets, which is called a t-value, um, uh, uh, a z-score or a t-score. Uh, that means that the relationship is not is is not strong at all. So um, essentially, w one of the ways of looking at uh, at these is that it I I is the of the numbers is that they correspond to essentially the slope of a line that would be drawn to connect the various values. So I can show that to you in class if if, if you're not interested about uh, if you're not uh, certain about what that means. But once again, so the the sign in front of the uh, the actual um, what's called the beta estimate, the estimate of the independent variable, and then uh, whether um, it's strong or not based on the number of stars. Okay.